Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Um, so I'm Evan. Uh, I work here as our 3D model manager at Formlabs. Uh, and this webinar today is going to be on the topic of creating 3D printed molds for silicone casting. Um, and so as I mentioned, I'm Evan. Uh, the bulk of this presentation is going to be given by our application engineer, Juliet. Uh, and you'll also see some specifics on mold design given by uh, Annalisa Russo, who is our um, user applications manager. So uh, with that, I think we can jump on to the agenda. So uh, first we'll do this brief introduction and then we'll play the bulk of the, the webinar content, uh, which will be on recording. Uh, and then we'll move on to uh, some case studies within that uh, recording of our customers doing really cool things with casting silicone. Um, and then we'll move on to a Q&A, a live Q&A, and that will be me here answering any questions that pop up during the course of the webinar. So let's dive in. First, a little introduction on silicon parts and how to manufacture silicon parts. So just a, a little, give a little context. So silicones are a class of polymers uh, that contain the elements silicon and oxygen, and they transform from a gel or a liquid to a highly flexible and stretchable solid after what we could call a curing process. So they are very popular material because they are very versatile. They have high performance property, um, many of them actually. So first they are soft ergonomic geometry, but they also have very good heat resistance, electrical insulation, chemical stability, high tear strength as well, and water tight seal and so on. So, they are very popular across, across many industries, from automotive to construction, electronics, consumer goods. So you can see those pictures uh, on these slides uh, in the healthcare market also. If you want to share from what industry you are, feel free to, to discuss that in the chat. It would be very curious to know what are the, the industry that you are, that you are in. Uh, and also in the entertainment industry, this is pretty popular material as well. So just a quick, um, quick um, uh, slides on durimetal scale. Durimetal scale that is a standard for showing the different uh, hardness of silicone. So we're going to uh, talk about a few different silicone here. You can see it range from a very soft material to very hard material, um, from soft mouth to hard, harder um, parts. So silicon elastomer dominate the market. This is what we are considering today. This is our focus. And they, are, they can be divided into three categories. First, liquid silicon rubbers, that is also called LSR. Those one are high performance silicone. Uh, they are usually employed for producing um, technical parts with very tight tolerance. And they are processed at high temperature with what we call uh, liquid injection molding. So they are usually selected for large volume production and industrial applications. Another, so you can see it on the left here. Another type of silicone are high temperature vulcanized or HTB silicones. They are also called sometimes um, high heat cured rubber, HCR. Uh, those one are more solid silicone usually and they are also having um, a, a lot of great properties in terms of temperature resistance, aging as well. Um, so they are often used in cables and, and insulators. Um, and usually they are uh, processed with a lot of different um, method actually, manufacturing process, but very often extrusion or compression molding um, in, among many others. So you can see it on the right. And a third type of uh, silicone elastomer is room temperature vulcanized silicone, RTV. This is what we're going to focus on today. Um, this is um, basically silicone that are uh, cured at room temperature, so there is no high heat uh, involved. So they are much relatively easier to process from the two previous silicone types and still have great mechanical property and thermal property as well. They are 
very popular in various industries to make gasket, medical device, uh, over molded device as well. I, I saw that a lot of people were interested in over molded device. And um, also very common to use mold, mold making, to make mold, sorry. So usually they require much longer cycle time to process and more manual labor. So they are better suited for small volume production. Um, and they are processed also by injection molding or compression molding, uh, different type of um, molding processes. And in those type of RTV silicone, uh, we actually consider three types, platinum catalyzed silicone that are higher cost, but also superior uh, in terms of um, dimension, long term dimensional stability and low shrinkage. Then there's tin catalyzed silicone. Those have uh, lower cost, but are less stable over time and tend to have higher shrinkage rate. Um, and then there's also silicon putty, uh, which is a two part putty in which the components is blended together and in equal volume. And um, those ones are uh, have also similar um, different type of uh, hardness. So I just want to mention here that I know platinum catalyzed silicone um, are quite popular and also have concern between for um, uh, reacting with 3D printed mold. So we're gonna uh, discuss that later in the in the presentation. Analisa is gonna discuss that later on. All right. Um, so now I want to discuss 3D printed rapid tooling. We actually already have a lot of content on rapid tooling in general. This is a popular topic for manufacturing process. And so if you're interested to learn more about what is rapid tooling, uh, we have a page on our website and we also have a white paper about that. So this is an uh, interesting resource to uh, understand what is rapid tooling. Um, but I'm just going to recap here um, what it is. So as I mentioned before, common silicon processing technique can be injection molding, compression molding, extrusion, resin transfer molding as well. So you can see here, um, those uh, illustration of this process. So those are uh, traditional process that involve some sort of tooling. So either a mold or a die that will shape the silicone into the shape that you want for your parts. And usually this tooling in may, is made out of machining metal. And it can be very expensive to produce and it can take weeks of lead time to produce. So most of those techniques are industrial techniques that are used in mass production uh, and the tooling is not really easily, um, um, you, you cannot make a lot of modification on your tooling, on your mold of the die. So for um, prototyping for designers that would like to prototype silicone parts or that would like to make small series of silicone parts with the right silicone that they're gonna use for production, uh, it's actually very challenging to, to be able to do that with those common manufacturing technique. So if you look at the uh, graph of product development process here, you can see that it starts with ID, concept, on, all the way on, on the left, and, um, and then series of prototype, first series and pre-production going to mass production. So in mass production, usually, we're using traditional manufacturing method that I just mentioned. And for early concept and first prototype, usually prototypers use direct 3D printing. And what we see is that there is a gap between prototyping and production. And this is where um, rapid tooling enters. It's uh, the process of 3D printed tool rapidly for low volume to be able to produce prototypes and small series and also just uh, either series of prototype or just the prototype in the material that you want. So RTV silicones are great for prototyping silicone parts and you can actually do it with very limited material in-house with um, very accessible type of silicone as well. All right, so uh, now, so as I introduce what is rapid tooling, I just want to give a bit of context why 3D printing is actually enabling rapid tooling. So for those who don't know Form Labs, we are a manufacturer of prof professional solution for 3D printing. So we manufacture the hardware, 
the 3D printing resin and also the software. And uh, 3D printing is really a powerful tool to produce parts in um, limited quantity and to produce tool rapidly. Um, it's because it's a tool-less fabrication process. So you get flexibility uh, and uh, agility to change your design. You also have design freedom, so you can have more that have also different type of complexity. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.